Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm honored to appear before you today representing the views of the American Chamber of Commerce in China, comprising approximately 1,200 member companies doing business uh, on the ground there. For American companies investing and doing business in China, an initial period of familiarization and limited profitability gave way in 2001, following China's accession to the WTO, to much greater market access, profitable operations, and the growth of strategically material businesses. In our most recent business climate survey, 71 percent of members reported being profitable or very profitable in the midst of the global recession. 58 percent reported increased revenue. 46 percent reported a higher profit margin from China operations than from their global uh, operations. I think in this context it's fair to say that many companies are doing uh, extremely well. Uh, there is, however, concern in the American business community that in managing through change, China will resort to top-down industrial planning and to discriminatory measures favoring domestic enterprises over foreign companies and the state-owned sector over the private sector, potentially resulting in narrowing market access and slower movement uh, toward a market economy. It, policies around the area of indigenous innovation uh, are a particular concern to many of our members. Traditional complaints over ineffective and but slowly improving protection of intellectual property rights have evolved into a more fundamental concern over China's industrial policies. Late last year, the Ministry of Science and Technology issued a circular on criteria for a national indigenous innovation product catalog which directly discriminated against products with foreign intellectual property. That has been adjusted in response to widespread objections, but despite these uh, actions, broad concerns remain that nationality of intellectual property ownership will be a criteria for government procurement, for more favorable tax treatment, for subsidies, and for other preferential policies in the future. Beyond indigenous innovation, we are also concerned by import substitution policies, by the government procurement law, which directly discourages procurement of imported products. And as you know, China is not yet a member of the WTO government procurement agreement. Standardization mandates, such as one by the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology requiring that the Chinese WAPI standard be included on any Wi-Fi enabled mobile device. The 2008 patent law expanded the grounds for compulsory licensing and requires foreign companies to submit patents originated in China that they wish to register abroad for a review by Chinese authorities of whether that patent relates to the security or vital interests of the state, including economic interests, before it can be filed abroad. The Standardization Administration is developing standards rules that could lead to compulsory licensing or licensing on non-commercial terms of foreign technologies included in, in mandatory national standards. Foreign invested enterprises uh, are excluded from participating in or voting in many of standards, uh, China's standard setting committees. There are exemptions from infringement in the patent law and drug registration rules for research and for non-commercial use and for research for producing generic pharmaceuticals. Uh, technology transfer is often required on terms favorable to the Chinese party in order to win large contracts. There is selective enforcement of the anti-monopoly law. Bid specifications have favored local producers, particularly in the wind power sector. And there are new encryption requirements that require infrastructure in key sectors use domestic technology. Taken together, these measures and supporting planning documents suggest a broad strategy of supporting Chinese enterprises in specific growth sectors to develop or obtain access to intellectual property, gain scale in protected domestic markets, export overcapacity to global markets, and compete both domestically and globally as national champions.
We therefore believe that it's important for the United States to uh, focus on these trade issues, on market access, on intellectual property, uh, and the general competitiveness of the United States in addressing our relationship with China. And for the rest, I will uh, leave it to you to take a look at my prepared testimony. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr.